Uniswap is similar to Bancor. The only difference is that Uniswap is only for ERC20 tokens, so only for Ethereum tokens. And now, if you think about it, it's only for Ethereum tokens. So do they need their own tokens? No, they don't. They just use Ethereum as the, as the main denominator to, to transfer tokens between all these different pools. So with Bancor, you can't do that because with Bancor, the tokens that they have is not just ERC20. It also talks about different kinds of tokens like EOS and other different platforms. So you can't really have Ethereum to be your main, your main denominator because this Ethereum doesn't work well in EOS pool, for, for example. So Bancor has its own token, BNT, to allow interoperability between all these pools. With Uniswap, it's so much simpler because they just have these token swap or these token exchanges between all the ERC20 tokens. So they don't need their own tokens, they just use Ethereum. The fun thing about Uniswap is that it doesn't have oracles. In Bancor's V2 model, they are adding um, Chainlink's oracles into that to be providing the information as like in price, price news feed. With Uniswap, there is none. And with, with all these different DEXs, right, these decentralized exchanges, the, the cool thing of why they exist is that with centralized exchanges, you, usually you just trade the top, top 10 or top 20 coins or, or tokens that's being used. But the thing about tokens that exist is that we have this thing called the long tail phenomenon. If you look at this graph over here, you have this green thing, which are the things that's always, that's, that's traded very frequently. And those are available in the decent, on the centralized exchanges. But the yellow one that you see, the, those are the long tail. So they don't have such huge volume, but people still want to trade, people still want to use them. It's not worth it to be listed on these exchange, these centralized exchanges like Binance and Huobi. It's very expensive. So they have these, all these DEXs to allow for exchanges between these long tail tokens. I saw someone comparing DEXs to liquidity provider of first resort, which is quite interesting because in the real world, you have central banks as the lender of last resort. What does it mean in the real world? In the real world, it means that if everyone stops lending you money, the central bank will still keep lending you money because they are the lender of last resort. In the decentralized, in the DeFi world, things have swapped a little bit, Uniswap, and it's a liquidity provider for first resort. What does it mean? When your tokens are in the long term, so Lisa's tokens, not a lot of people are going to trade. It's not going to be listed on Binance, but a few people want to trade for some reason. And then I can provide liquidity by having a Lisa token pool in Uniswap and I am the first provider of the liquidity. So liquidity, liquidity provider of the first resort for Lisa token. And you can do that in all these decentralized liquidity pools. With Uniswap, things are a lot simpler. It's a very simple model. They call it the constant product market maker. So it's K equals X, Y. So X will be token A and Y will be token B. So they use R alpha, R beta. And if you see this model, what I want to show in this, this little video that you see over here is that the curve changes. So the curve, remember we talked about how curve doesn't really move. The thing is the curve itself, you know, the curvature doesn't move so much, but it can move in and out. What does it mean? If you look at this video again, what you see is that the, the curve keeps shifting up, up, outwards. When a curve shifts outwards, it means that there's more liquidity being added into the system. But the curve doesn't really change so much. It just, it just shifts outwards. And that's because you have liquidity from different, like either token A or token B in there. Remember we talked about the idea of invariance. So nothing is created or destroyed. Everything is, is transformed from one form to the other. So that green, that green box that you see, I can translate it to this this little curve that I drew and three different colors. So if you imagine the colors go all the way through, so they're not overlapping, the entire orange versus the entire blue versus the entire purple, these are different colors of the, of the area under the graph. What does it mean? What does it mean by the area under the curve? The area under the curve shows the amount that you receive by swapping one token for the other. And you can see that at different, by swapping different amounts, you, you get different exchanges in the tokens. But the cool thing is that if you calculate the different boxes, imagine they don't overlap and they go through, the ratio is the same. Why? Because according to the conservation theory, the first principles in, in physics, 
nothing gets destroyed. It just changes from one form to the other. So it once again goes back to this constant product market, the, the Uniswap's formula of K equals token A times token B. So the area under the curve will, will still be the same because that's nothing gets destroyed or created. Everything, whenever you change from token A to token B or token B to token A, the amount, the amount change is the same, provided the curve doesn't shift, of course. If the curve shifts because there's additional liquidity, then, then the area under the curve will be different. But if, the, if everything stays the same, the, the curve is like that, and you can, if you change for any, any of the, any amount, then the, the sum of the amount changed will be the same. 